All right, Shalom, Shalom, giving all praises, glory, and honor to Yahweh Bahasham, Yahweh Shai Bahasham, Chakodash. All right, what I just said was giving praises, glory, and honor to uh, God. The world calls God. His name is Yahweh Bahasham. Is in the name of Yahweh Shai, which is the Son of God. All right, which the world ignorantly calls is Jesus. Okay, Bahasham Chakodash is in the name of the Holy Spirit. All right, so I come to you in the name of the Holy Spirit. Uh, I come to you in the name of Yahweh. In the, in the name of his son, through the Holy Spirit, all right? Before I start the video, I want to give double honors to the apostles and the elders of Great Millstone who rule well. And peace and salutations to every brother preaching the truth throughout the four corners of the earth with truth and sincerity in their hearts and for the love of the gospel, okay? This is the brother Shamaria of the Indiana camp. All right, uh, coming at you with another lesson, and I don't have a specific title for this lesson. I was just meditating in the spirit, and uh, I really was... Meditating heavily upon uh, our people are destroyed for a lack of knowledge, you know. So they are destroyed, and you know how are they destroyed? Because it's a lot of people that read the scriptures out there, and they quote that scripture in Hosea. All right, our people are destroyed for a lack of knowledge, you know. But their idea of destroyed is not what they think it is, you know. They don't have uh, they don't have a clear edification, you know. But uh, deeper, deeper into that, our people are destroyed because the Lord wants to destroy them, you know. In the book of Deuteronomy, I'm gonna get it. The book of Deuteronomy 28, I mean 29 and one. Uh, the point is at four. All right, four is the point because our people are destroyed for a lack of knowledge. But it's a select few people that can only grasp this knowledge. If you weren't ordained to grab this knowledge, then you're not gonna get it, you know. So. Yeah, your heart, sometimes you're, we're, we're, we're passionate people. You know, the Israelites are naturally a passionate people. So we're going to feel, you know, kind of like sympathetic towards the people that can't get it. You know, when you go and look at the average Jake that's all low down and tore up, you know, you're going to feel for them. You know, you're going to think, man, I can't wait till we, you know, rule on earth because our people ain't got to live like this, man. You know, people ain't got to be on drugs. Or people ain't got to sell drugs. Or people ain't got to rob nobody just to get by. You know? Or people don't have to give their children up to the government because they can't take care of them. You know? Um, but anyway, Deuteronomy chapter 29, verse 1. These are the words of the covenant which the Lord commanded Moses to make the children of Israel in the land of Moab besides the covenant which he made with them in Horeb and Horeb and Moses called unto all unto all Israel and said unto them, You have seen all the Lord did before your eyes in the land of Egypt unto Pharaoh, and unto all his servants, and unto all his land. The great temptations which their which thine eyes have seen, the signs and those great miracles. Alright, so he's speaking about all of the miracles in Egypt that the Lord has done. He sent the plagues on them, the frogs, the flies, you know, he killed every he killed every firstborn, you know. In Egypt, in Egypt, he split the Red Sea, all right, and made Israel to walk on dry land, you know. All of these miracles they did, they did, they, they did see. But verse 4 says, yet the Lord hath not given you a heart to perceive. Now, when you go into that word heart in the Hebrew, I go to, uh, 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 pull it up in the Strong's in my mind, so that, but when you go into that word heart in the Hebrew, it goes back to the word mind, inner man, you know, so on and so forth, etc. And it goes to your mind, basically, you know, 29 and 4. Fuck. Four. Yet the Lord has not given you a heart to perceive. The word heart is lob in the Hebrew, and it means inner man, mind, will, heart, understanding. You know, so the Lord hasn't given you the understanding to perceive all right let's let's replace that word heart with understanding so that's basically what the word lob means understanding intellect all right let's replace that word heart in verse four with the word intellect or understanding it says yet the lord hath not given you the intellect to perceive and eyes to see and ears to hear unto this day all right and I have led you forty years in the wilderness, and your clothes are not waxing old upon you, and thine shoe is not waxing old upon thine foot. You did eat bread, not you did not eat bread, neither you drink wine or strong drink, 
that ye might know that I am the Lord your God. So the Lord preserved them 40 years in the wilderness, and they still didn't have understanding to perceive that the Lord was in their favor. They kept going off from the Lord because they wanted to live in the lust of the flesh, you know? So when I read the book of Hosea, and this is the scripture that I was meditating mostly on when I was thinking, uh, 4 and 6, was it 4 and 7? It's 4 and 6. My Hosea 4 and 6, my people are destroyed for lack of knowledge because thou hast rejected knowledge I will also reject thee, that thou shalt be no priest to me, seeing that thou hast forgotten the law of thine God, and I will also forget thine children. All right, he says, my, my people are destroyed for a lack of knowledge. Knowledge on what? Now, you got these pastors out here that talks about knowledge of the Lord and how to follow him, but they don't even know how to follow the Lord. You know? They don't even know how to follow the Lord. Uh, the scripture said, he that believed me on the, as the scripture said, I'm going to Google that. I mean, I Google so I can as script. It's in John 6, I believe. John 6 and 39. It's like the John 6 and 38. Look what the verse is there. Yeah, I'm going to read 36 and 37. John 7, John, the book of John 7 and 37. In the last day, that great day of feast, Yahweh Shai stood and cried, saying, if any man thirsts, let him come unto me and drink. He that be, he that believeth on me, as the scripture hath said, out of his belly shall flow rivers of living water. But this spake of the spirit which they have believed on him shall receive, for the Holy Ghost hath not yet given, because Yahweh was not yet glorified. All right, let's focus on 38. He that believe from me as the scriptures have said. Now, what does the scripture say? These people in the church, they don't believe on the Lord as the scriptures have said. You know, they believe on the Lord with their own hearts, fulfilling the lusts of the flesh. That's why I say our people are destroyed. Not just the people that you see in the street wallowing and on drugs, you know, not just them, but everyone who doesn't understand the law of the Lord and his, his word. All right. Because the law doesn't stop at the Ten Commandments. The law is the whole book. You know? And I get that. I believe it's in Ecclesiastes. It says the whole duty of man. Ecclesiastes 12 and 13. Let us hear the conclusion of the whole matter. Fear Yahweh and keep his commandments. For this is the whole duty of man. You know, fear Yahweh and keep his commandments. His commandments are throughout the entire book, man. You know, his commandments are throughout the entire book. It's not written in the, in the Ten Commandments to, um, uh, it's not written in the Ten Commandments to wait on the Lord to plead our cause. You know, it's later on in the prophets. But we still got to do it because it's later. It's, it's the commandment. When you go in the word commandment, that word, one of those, when you go into the word precept, so like it, when you go into the word precept, it means commandment, you know, because in the book of uh, Isaiah, the 28th chapter or 29th chapter, it says, uh, I get it, you go into the book of Isaiah, and only the, only the people that the Lord has chosen to perceive, the only people that the Lord has given the mind to understand is going to serve him in spirit and in truth. All right, as the scriptures have said, 28, 29, 6. No, it's not. Is it yeah, it is. Whom shall I? Whom shall he teach knowledge? And whom shall he make to understand doctrine? All right, so whom shall he teach knowledge? 
who am I make to understand doctrine? Doctrine means teaching. So not everybody is going to understand doctrine, all right? And not everybody the Lord is going to teach knowledge. It says, him that are winged from the milk and drawn from the breast, all right? Milk being simple scriptures that, that, that are verbatim, all right? The opposite of uh, deep, deep, dark sayings, all right? It says, for precept must be upon precept, uh, precept upon precept, line upon line, line upon line, here a little and there a little. All right, for stammering lips and another tongue will I speak to this people. Whom he said, this is the rest, where where ye shall cause the weary to rest, and there is the refreshing, yet they would not hear. So they would not hear. All right? So they would not hear. You know? He said, this is the weary where I'll cause the weary to rest. And it's true, we're supposed to be tired of this place, man. And uh, in the Re book of Revelations, it says, uh, come out of her, my people. The her is the, the customs of this land, you know? The the uh the practices, the customs, the uh the tradition, Christmas, Halloween, all these holidays, you know, to be an American. And that's how these people are destroyed, man, for a lack of knowledge. They don't know who they are. And they won't understand who they are because why the Lord has not given them eyes uh heart to perceive, you know. How they uh how they destroy it? You know, like I said in Hosea, like I said in uh, uh, Hosea 4 and 7. The, the lock, yeah. I'm tripping. Hosea 4 and 6. My people are destroyed for lack of knowledge because they have rejected the knowledge. I also will reject thee. That thou shalt be no priest to me. Because what? Knowledge is power, man. In the, uh, in the book of uh, Wisdom of Solomon in the 6th chapter, I think it's 6 and 20, he says, If thou desire thrones and scepters, if you want power, then, see, then get wisdom. So if you reject the knowledge to know, then you can't get wisdom. So apply the knowledge that you've been given. So apply the understanding that you've been given. You know? I know I'm all over the place, but you know it's, it's it's led by the spirit because you know it's all it's all it all it all it's all for edification purposes, you know. Those who the Lord choose to edify, like I said, wisdom of Solomon six and twenty. It says, therefore, the desire of wisdom bringeth to a kingdom. So if you reject the knowledge of the Lord, then you're not going to have a kingdom. So. Before you actually can rule a nation, you have to know how to do it first. You know, you can't get a car first, uh, using this analogy. You can't get a car first before you know how to drive it. You know you're going to wreck it. It's more likely for you to wreck it uh, when you get it than to know how to drive it first and then get it. You know what I'm saying? Same thing with knowledge. It says, therefore, the desire of wisdom bring it to a kingdom. Verse 21. For if your delight be in thrones and scepters, all right, scepters is what, what kings hold, a rod, all right, that the kings hold, and it, it resembles their power, and they sit upon thrones. If your delight be in thrones and scepters, all right, rulership, O ye kings of the people, honor wisdom, respect wisdom, let wisdom be above you. It says that ye may reign forevermore, all right? So honor wisdom that ye may reign forevermore. You know? Um, back to Hosea. For my people are destroyed for a lack of knowledge. Because thou hast rejected the knowledge, I also will reject thee. That thou shalt be no priest to me. Because the knowledge of the law, all right, is how you follow the Lord. You know? Uh, in Proverbs it says, "The fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom." The oh mm. uh, yeah, okay, it's a couple of them. It's three of them in the Book of Psalms. Uh, two in Proverbs. It's one in Psalms and two in Proverbs. I'll get them all. Psalms 
Psalms 111 and 10. The fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. A good understanding have all they that do his commandments, his praise endureth forever. Verse uh, Proverbs 1 and 7. For the fear of the Lord is the beginning of knowledge, but fools despise wisdom and instruction. And those are the ones that the Lord has rejected, you know. And I get a precept for that later after I finish these. It says, the, uh, Proverbs 9 and 10, it says, The fear of the Lord is the beginning of knowledge, of wisdom, and knowledge of the holy is understanding. So knowledge is power, man. Knowledge is everything. Because when you know better, you'll do better if you really believe on the knowledge you've been given. You know? If you know better, you'll do better. You get what I'm saying? Because, uh... Knowledge bringeth to a kingdom. That's why when it said uh, Proverbs 1 and 7, it says, The fear of the Lord is the beginning of knowledge, but fools despise wisdom and instruction. All right? Fools despise wisdom and instruction because they, why they want to live after the lust of the flesh. Knowledge and wisdom teach you to discard the lust of the flesh, all right, and walk in the spirit. Even though you are flesh, walk in the things of the spirit. You know, but fools are going to despise that because they let their flesh overpower them. You know, they put the matter, they put matter over their mind. Let's get, uh, let's go back to Hosea 4 and 6. My people are destroyed for lack of knowledge because thou hast rejected knowledge. All right, fools, I will, al I will also reject thee. All right, so the Lord is going to turn his face against you. All right, it's written in the book of Matthew, the 10th chapter. In the 33rd verse, Matthew 10, 33, it says, But whosoever shall deny me before men, him will I also deny before my Father, which is in heaven. All right, so whoever deny the Lord before men, so when we out there prophesying on the highways and byways, all right, wisdom utter her voice in the streets, you know, and you, and you turn aside the wisdom, you reject the knowledge that we're trying to teach you, the Lord said he'll also reject you before the Father, which is in heaven, because Yahweh Shai, who the world calls Jesus Christ, is the mediator. All right, his true name being Yahweh Shai, all right, his true Paleo-Hebrew name, all right, he's the mediator between us and the Father. So he's our, uh, he's our, he's our defendant. He defends us, all right, when, a, when, a, when Yahweh is going to come back and destroy this place, Yahweh Shai is going to say, he, these are the men. That stood so stiffly for me. Uh, I beg of you, Father, do not destroy them. All right? Because these are the men that have believed on me. All right? Because while we did not deny the knowledge of the Lord, all right? We didn't deny him before men. It said fools reject knowledge. Okay? Back to... Uh I took away my Hosea. Back to Hosea 4 and 6. It really... Everything that I'm saying stems off of this Hosea because it's so it's so profound, you know. Hosea four and six. My people are destroyed for a lack of knowledge, and that's why they are. They are going to be literally physically destroyed, all right. And they're already destroyed because they commit a sin, all right. And when you don't know the law of the Lord, you 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 unwillingly and willingly commit sin, all right. And it's written in the book of Tobit, he that sin is an enemy to his own life. And I, I get that. It's the book of Tobit. I don't know exactly per se where it's at. But I'll find it. I got my pocket full right here in my lap. So just give me two seconds while I find it for you. I have it highlighted in my pocket full. That's why it's good to go in them pages, you know. It's uh, Tobit 12, verse 10. Tobit 12 and 10. It states, But they that sin are enemies to their own life. Alright? But those that sin are enemies to their own life. And that's it, man. Because you are enemy to your own life. You know? So that's... Because, because, because you're willfully sinning, you're going to get destroyed. That's why they are destroyed for lack of knowledge. And knowledge, the right knowledge, calls you not to sin to be in the grace of the Heavenly Father. 
All right, it says, I will also reject thee, that thou shalt be no priest to me, seeing that thou hast forgotten the law of thine God, because the law of thine God is life. And if you do anything aside from that, it's death. All right, and it says, I will also forget thine children. All right, so the Lord's not going to deliver you nor your children, nor will he make you a priest, because you forgot the law of him, of the law of life. And that's in the book of, uh, I believe it's in the book of Psalm, Proverbs 8, Proverbs 8, uh, book of Proverbs chapter 8, verse 36, no, it's more like 33, yeah, here instruction, all right, let me throw it at 32, Proverbs 8 and 32, now therefore hearken unto me, hearken means, uh, to, uh, um, follow instruction, all right, Hearken unto me, O ye children, for blessed are ye that keep my ways. Hear instruction and be wise and refuse it not. So the Lord is going to kill them that, refu that refuses instruction. All right. Blessed is the man that heareth me, watching daily at my gates, waiting at the posts of my doors. And how do you do that, man? By standing in the spirit. And what is the spirit? The words of the scriptures, man. The words of, the, that, the words of this whole book is the spirit. Because why does the Lord said this, uh, the Lord said uh, these words that I'm speaking to you, they are spirit and they are life. And it's in the book of John. Uh, where is that at? I'm mad at myself for not knowing what I said over here. I'm so mad at myself. John 8. Or five, seven. Oh man, I'm so mad at myself. It says, uh, some to the lines of uh, the, the words that are speaking to you, they are spirit and they are life. I'm so fucking pissed off, man, with that. I'm so pissed off that I don't know what I said. Words speak life. John 6 and 63. So I care for that one, man. That's my fault. I should have known where that was at. This is John 6 and 63. It is a spirit that quickeneth, and that word quickeneth means to make alive, to produce life, to forget or bear living young, to cause to live, to make alive, give life. All right, so it's the it's the knowledge and the fear of Yahweh, because the fear is going to have you to do, to act, make an action, you know, to do it and, and hearken unto his instruction. And that's going to make you alive because the law of the, the Lord is life. So I got the word quickeneth, it means to, to cause to live. It is a spirit that quickeneth the flesh profiteth nothing. So the things that are carnal in the flesh that are opposite of the spirit cause it, it profited nothing. The words that I speak unto you, they are spirit and they are life. You know, so that's the spirit. So that's how you watch daily at the Lord's gates. Proverbs 8 and 34. Blessed is the man that heareth me watching daily at my gates, waiting at the post of my doors. Constantly praying, man. Praying, doing things with the spirit, praying, fasting, reading, understanding, being around Akim, being around brothers, you know, doing videos. That's waiting at the Lord's gates, you know, because the Lord is the gatekeeper, you know. It says, uh, verse 35, for whoso find of me, find of life and shall obtain favor of the Lord. But he that sinneth against me wrongeth his own soul. All they that hate me love death. All right, because uh, this is a precept for the Book of Tobit. It says, "Those that sin are enemies to their own life." It says, "For whosoever findeth me findeth life, and shall obtain favor of the Lord." But he that sinneth against me wrongeth his own soul. So you're spiritually committing suicide, man. You know, you're not. You're physically walking. You're physically talking alive, 
but you're really dead in the inside. Your spiritual self is dead, you know, and you're going to physically get destroyed because you choose to, you choose death. But it's really the Lord choosing your death because in the book of Deuteronomy, the 28th chapter says, it says, uh, the Lord is going to rejoice over you to destroy you. And it says that in the word of the Lord. All right. Uh, um, what does it say there? That it said, just as the Lord has rejoiced over you to bless you, He will rejoice over you to destroy you. I think it's in uh, twenty, twenty-eight and sixty-three. Let's come. I'm gonna close up with this one. This is Deuteronomy twenty-eight. 63 and it shall come to pass that as the lord rejoice over you to do you good and to multiply you so the lord will rejoice over you to destroy you and bring you to naught and ye shall be plucked from off of the land whether ye go to possess it so just as the lord is pleased over you to give you things that's benefiting you the Lord is also going to be just as pleased to destroy you because you went off, you know. So, with that being said, I hope this video is edifying to the elect of Israel. All right, and I'm going to give all praise and glory and honor to Yahweh by Hashem, Yahweh Shad by Hashem, Rekakwadash. All right, double honor to the apostles and the elders of Great Millstone who rule well and peace and salutations to every Akim given uh, the whole truth. All right, teaching the whole truth. All right. To uh, the four corners of the earth for truth and sincerity. Till next time, I'll say shalom.